Hi guys, we're in Istanbul, and this amazing city that was once the center of the Ottoman Empire has a lot to offer. It is a fantastic place to come and visit. So we're going to tell you a little bit about it, we're going to show you a little bit about it, and hopefully get your juices flowing to come and visit Istanbul. So what can I tell you about Istanbul? Well, it's a city that spans two continents. Half of the city is on the European side of the Bosphorus Straits, and the other half of the city is on the Asian side of the Bosphorus Straits. It's a unique city anywhere in the world in that respect. Um, it's a very, very vibrant city. It's exciting. It's full of life. The food is fantastic. The culture is very, very interesting and the architecture is just extraordinary. So it's well worth uh, a visit. Now the first thing you're going to notice about Istanbul when you land is that the airport is humongous. It takes a long, long, long time to taxi all the way from the runway to the main terminal. And once you get to the main terminal, it takes a long time to walk from your gate to the immigration area and get yourself processed and get through. It is a huge, humongous, humongous airport. Let's talk for a moment about where to stay when you're visiting Istanbul. Um, for me, the city really centers around the Bosphorus. So if you want to feel the real heartbeat of the city, I think you need to be as close to the Bosphorus as you possibly can. If you have a large budget, you could look at places like um, the Shangri-La, which is a beautiful property right on the edge of the Bosphorus. You can look, of course, at the Four Seasons, again, right along the banks of the Bosphorus. Beautiful, beautiful property. And the other uh, significant property along there as well is the Kempinski, and that's also um, a very, very nice property. Um, if, you, if your budget doesn't quite stretch that far, but you still want to be right on the banks of the Bosphorus, I can suggest that you try the Radisson Blue. And in fact, the footage that you're seeing here is when I was having breakfast uh, at the Radisson Blue right there along the Bosphorus. And in fact, just before this, some dolphins popped out of the water while I was eating my cheese and olives. So it's amazing what you can see um, down along there. I've stayed in different parts of uh, Istanbul. I've stayed in the old town at the Double Tree nice property wasn't so fussed about the area to be perfectly honest um, i stayed at the hilton bosphorus which is you know great views has great views but to me it's a little bit too far up the hill for my liking i've stayed at the conrad that's a nice property pretty reasonable location you know that was okay i've also stayed a little bit further out of town at a place called floria at the crown plaza and uh, it's, it's back on the Marmara Sea, so where the Bosphorus ends, it joins into the Marmara Sea. So you're still on the water's edge, but you're probably 45 minutes car ride um, or so out of town. But it's not a bad location if you've got business out near uh, the airport or in different parts of Istanbul. It's quite convenient from that perspective. And for someone who wants to try a hotel on the Asian side, um, I stayed in an area called Moda, M-O-D-A, and it's a really funky, hip happening uh, area on the Asian side of the Bosphorus. There's lots of restaurants, there's lots of people, there's a really upbeat happening vibe going on there. And in fact, I spent last New Year's Eve there together with my wife, and we had a blast. So really worth uh, checking that out if you want to try something different. Let's talk about some of the key tourist attractions or historical sites that you might want to visit when you are in Istanbul. I'd say the most famous site in the whole of Istanbul would be the Hagia Sophia. And this amazing mosque actually started off life as an Orthodox Christian church. And in fact, it was the third Orthodox Christian church that was built on the same site. The previous two were destroyed in a previous invasions of Istanbul. Um, however, when the, uh, the Muslims came to Istanbul, they converted this beautiful church into a beautiful mosque. And it's quite a, an amazing, amazing 
structure that you can see there in these images. And as you walk around, you can get hints and glimpses of its previous life. And you see some Christian paintings that are sort of peeking through the, the cover-up um, of the Islamic years. And you also see carved into one of the balustrades up on the second floor some Viking runes, which is quite extraordinary. So there were Vikings here that also visited Constantinople back in the day. And something that I found absolutely extraordinary about this amazing place is that while you're walking around and you're staring in awe at all of the incredible paintings and architecture and the, the, the history and brilliance of the place, it's very easy not to spare a thought for what's happening beneath your feet. And if you actually take the time and look at the floor, you can see that these individual paving stones, both on the floor and on the walls, have been aligned perfectly so that the seam that's running through the natural stone is continued all the way through the panorama. It's absolutely amazing. that absolutely blew me away is this place right here called the Basilica Cistern and this was an underground reservoir water supply for the ancient city of Constantinople that was constructed and maintained and operated by the Romans it's an underground cavern and it's been carved out of the uh, the, the underground area of Constantinople and it's uh, supported by these incredible pillars that the Romans built and it is absolutely amazing you have to go there and see this place it's extraordinary have you ever been here I'd love to hear a comment from you in the comments section down below on what your impressions were of this incredible place let's visit another one of these incredibly famous tourist attractions here in Constantinople and this of course is the Grand Bazaar. I mean you've all heard the term about you know this looks like a Turkish Bazaar well this is a Turkish Bazaar in fact it is the Turkish Bazaar this is the one that started it all and you can buy just about anything you can imagine in this place from t-shirts to belts to clothing to gold to food to Turkish delight to small furry animals and birds and luxury goods and household goods and food and everything that you can possibly imagine you can buy it and haggle and you know purchase and negotiate to your heart's content here in this Turkish bazaar it's an absolute maze of covered areas and walkways and lanes and alleyways that all interconnect and it's a real hive of activity it's extraordinary to just be there and let it all just go about around you it's an amazing place it's hard to talk about Istanbul and Turkey without talking about the food the food is sensational I mean they have the meat the kebabs they have seafood mixed seafood grills I mean it's just fantastic you've got baklava you've got Turkish coffee you've got Turkish delight the food options are plentiful and they are absolutely fantastic it's very very difficult to go wrong with your food in Turkey thank you for taking the time to watch our short video we hope you found it both interesting and informative and we hope you picked up some tips to help you plan your trip to Turkey please consider subscribing to our channel hit the like symbol and hit the notifications bell below so that you don't miss any future information that we post bye for now